Hello everyone, we are a couple of students of the DRL Design Research Laboratory at the AA and our studio master Theodore Spiropoulos and we prepared a couple of questions uh, which we will start right away. First question for you Theo is why did you decide to come to AA and who influenced you in your decision? Why did I decide to come to the AA? Uh, I came to the AA because uh, a lot of the people that I respected uh, either studied here or taught here and I thought uh, there must be a reason that people are coming from this place so out of great naivety I decided to get on a plane from New Jersey to fly over here to see for myself. In terms of influence, to be honest with you, I think the greatest influences I've had have been my parents and my brother. They've basically taught me the value of hard work and also responsibility and all of these kind of things that I think a good family does. When it comes to architecture, I think that's been a very personal kind of exploration. And I think when I found that, I fell in love with it in a way which uh, only a few things can sort of affect you as a way of sort of asking questions about the world, as a way of actually interacting with people, and as a way of sort of discovering and kind of pushing forward, I think, ideas that can make a meaningful influence. You're directing the DRL since 10 years, almost. What were your expectations and what turned out to be reality? And how are you planning to move on from now? I mean, when I came here, I had no expectations. I just had a belief that I thought that this place could potentially uh, open me up to new ideas. I left after I graduated, went directly back to New York and started working for Eisenman and had my own issues over there. Decided to come back to London only because my brother uh, was coming to study in Central St. Martins. And I began my teaching career in 2002 here. At the same time, started my practice, Minima Forms. I've never had the expectations of the place. I've just basically wanted to participate and to contribute to it. And uh, along the way, I think I've met a lot of really great people. And I believe in the DRL, I think, very much because I see that a lot of the students are coming from everywhere and they share, I think, the same motivation that I had. So. With that in mind, I've been encouraged continuously to try to create a framework for other people, to discover themselves, to discover each other, to be optimistic, to believe that architecture matters, to be unapologetic about that. Um, where the future of the DRL or the AA goes, to be honest with you, there's a lot of uncertainty. Um, that's not really something that I can personally say, but I do believe in having vision, and I do believe in actually having accountability. And I'm motivated very much about the fact that we live in pretty radical times, and I think more than ever, I think we need people who have a positive outlook uh, to work through ideas and to use architecture as an armature to basically instrumentalize them. In this era of uncertainty and genericness, how do you think design can actually enhance everyday life? And what, what is your uh, approach towards that? I'm completely against aspects of generic sort of ideas of uh, basically what we can sort of offer to the world. I think a lot of people put a lot of value in very academic ways of thinking about things, but at the heart of things, I think it's about demanding that people deserve better and using design as a way to sort of offer that to them, to sort of upgrade the conversation, to believe that not only does design matter, but it's fundamental, it's creative, it's human, it enables people to be curious, it allows them to come together Space is a medium, it's always been for me, for my brother, and we see it uh, very much as a, as a way of communicating. Fundamentally, I think that's how society has always sort of operated. I think today, to be honest with you, we live in a sort of moment of distraction and uncertainty, and actually there's no real belief in tomorrow.
So I feel very strongly that that it's fundamental, I think, that we sort of ask ourselves questions that matter, that we make sort of informed decisions about what the capacity is of us to come together to do things. And to be honest with you, I really believe that we can do anything if we really want to. So that's the things that I try to enable here. That's why I still stay at the AA. That's why I work with my brother, and that's why, I, to be honest with you, I really want to actively participate, celebrate diversity, but at the same time actually uh, become a force for actual influence and change. I think a lot of people are having a tough time in this world, and I think it's really important that we as designers, as creatives, as artists, as just basically people, engage and participate and contribute, I think, to the larger sort of project. I'd like to think that architecture should participate in these things. And whatever that definition is to me, to be honest with you, may not be shared. But for sure, I believe like design is a way of really working through problems and architecture is a way of thinking. And as long as that actually is something where young people also really feel that they can sort of have a voice through that, I feel that then architecture is probably still the right place for me to be in. So the AA is uh, renowned worldwide as like a school where there is experimentation and it's more renowned as a school of thought. And uh, in, you've been here for 15 years and you've been the director of DRO for 10 years. So that's a really long time. How do you think that experimentation in the school in these 15 years has changed? Also, do you still believe that there is experimentation that is happening in the school right now, apart from the DRO? Okay, that's a pretty <laughs> in-depth question there. You like the two, three-part question. Um, I think experimentation is very valuable. I don't believe in experimentation for experimentation's sake. I feel that it's fundamentally about trying to challenge and to progress and to be innovative, but also to construct, I think, a much deeper understanding of what it is that we're working on. I think today we make a lot of assumptions about things. And I think that we have to have a general sensitivity to things if we really want to sort of contribute in a meaningful way. I've always been influenced in people that have taken risk. I've always learned a lot from the process. Uh, uncertainty and latency has always been a part of our world. And I think to make things shared and to sort of make them a framework for others, I think is an obligation that we share. And I feel that experimentation in some way leads through a kind of direct interrogation into ways of thinking that actually allows us to sort of break our habit. I think fundamentally people are comfortable, but they're not happy. They're not really being challenged, they're not really being creative, and I feel that that's not something that is a privilege that we share. But I think that that's a very fundamental, basic human thing. So with respect to the school, I think our experimentation has changed, and I think it should change, and it can evolve. If I would say that uh, people believe in experimentation these days in the school, I would kind of question that. It doesn't seem to me that people are maybe as naive as I was to believe that uh, some of these things could really fundamentally, radically change the way that we think about everything. Sometimes I feel that things are a little bit too academic and things are too uh, very much kind of representational and stuck towards an idea of what it means to be professional and what it means to actually communicate ideas. And I think I've been much more on the other side of things, which is to challenge fundamentally what those habits are if it's only just even to sort of interrogate yourself and the things that you're good at. Everything that I've done with my brother, project to project in particular, whatever we sort of build up a certain knowledge, we always try to push in a different direction. Fundamentally for us to just continuously pursue ideas and to continuously learn and, and feel excited about what all of this means. 
that's how I've tried to run the DRL, as an experiment that also collectively is shared and that people work through that together. Talking of a more global picture, do you have a more personal agenda uh, as a designer, as an architect, um, as a studio master uh, within the DRL? Is this just a part for you towards a bigger picture? Does it serve for you something? or? Are you more or less going step by step and opportunity by opportunity, project by project, to sort of um, come to a solution? Or is the way, so to say, your solution, or do you have already sort of set up something which needs to be achieved, let's say, right? Do you have a picture already? I'm a, a vision, let's say, you know, I, what you said earlier. Yeah, already. I think vision is an important word for me, and I've always had a vision. But I think that vision has always really included other people and has never really been based solely on what I think, but what I can enable. And I feel as long as that I'm here in the DRL, that that's my responsibility. My time in the DRL and my time with Minima Forums has moved in parallel. And I've always, for the longest, at least for the first half of my time here, I've always kept them separate. It's only been, I think, in the last 10 years that I've tried to bring them together in some way because I really do believe that academia, practice, these are so symbiotic in terms of relationships that I feel the necessity to sort of share what I've discovered in a much more direct way and at the same time open up the discourses that I've been developing here in a way that also can be advanced, I think, within the professional world. Um, I really do believe in thinking more prototypically about the world. I think that a lot of challenges are in front of us. You know, the AA has been a place, to be honest with you, that I've always uh, felt quite humble to be here. At the same time, the AA is nothing more than a belief. It's not a place of amazing resources, but I do think it's a place of some very amazing people that has been influential to me and I feel has enabled me to actually be much more empowered by the belief that I should continue, I think, a legacy in some way of just really trying to create the next generation of people. A lot of the people that teach in the DRL are ex-students of mine. I've always believed in youth. Uh, where the DRL goes, to be honest with you, I'm not sure that it's up to me to figure that out. But as I've been here actually as a student and I've gone full cycle as a director, as I've probably sat here longer than any other particular member of faculty student in its community, I think I have a lot of knowledge, but I think at the same time, you know, there's a time when that will move on for other people to sort of progress. Um, it's going to be 20 years of the DRL. That's uh, much longer than any experiment that I know. With the only exception, to be honest with you, Buckminster Fuller, who basically set up his project as a 50-year experiment. He is, I think, one of those references which I tried to share with you guys, and I think he is probably a person at the heart of it who really saw humanity in design, and designed through humanity. So I feel, as far as that's concerned, I feel that those are opportunities that this place still enables. I am very much uh, a supporter of the AA. Schools are falling all over the place. Very important places that really progress the practice of architecture, Cooper Union and others. And I really do believe that this place is unique. So as long as I can contribute and I feel that that's meaningful, I will. Maria? I don't have any questions. You're too nice to me. You can laugh. I can. You guys are the things that are bringing spice to this conversation. I'm just basically launching into it with basically the reasons why I'm here. School's been good to me in many ways. 
gave me a chance when I was 24 years old to start teaching. To be honest with you, I never looked back since. Found some of my closest friends, my partner. There's not many things that haven't been involved. And so as far as that's concerned, I, I have nothing but good things to say. But it's a difficult place to be. As a studio master and director of the DRL, um, who is believing in experimentation, um, you of course suggest that in general, in the field of architecture, there should be more experimentation and research, right? Um, and you mentioned resources earlier, which is, of course, sort of part of that. And many architectural offices just don't have those resources to do research. Um, do you think, in general, that it is a problem of information, or is it a problem of the medium? for other institutions to understand the importance of research and experimentations in that field to sort of appreciate and understand to have really um, a different approach in the design world uh, to achieve higher goals. Right? You're speaking to someone who's never had resources. Someone, to be honest with you, who's run programs, and to be honest with you, isn't working so much with so many things. I don't think that it's necessary to have them. To be honest with you, it's served us okay up till now to be inventive and to find other ways, to be creative and to really fundamentally not believe in disciplinary distinctions. I've never believed in disciplinary distinctions. I always believed that the project make certain demands and if you really believe in making a response that's meaningful you're going to follow that trajectory where it leads you it may lead you to robots it may lead you to interface design it may lead you to atmospheres it may lead you to believe that actually architecture isn't the answer and you should also be in a position to be able to address that and respond to that some problems are not architectural by nature and though I think in discourse we try to be holistic about talking about all aspects of life, from the social and to the political, I think it's also a responsibility to see how we can actively participate in that. I don't really believe we're just here to be critics. I think ideas need to find their form to manifest themselves, to be prototyped, to be tested, and to be put out in the world for other people to basically use. They should be instruments of change. Not because I say so, but because people believe so. I think the only real way to do that is, I think, to do your part, to create the opportunity to work through things, to start to be inventive about actually raising the stakes, contributing something more, adding value to things. So we've never always had the resources, and I think at some moment that has hurt us. But at the same time, honestly, I can't say that our students and the things that we do aren't of the highest kind of research value. Equipment never brought out ideas. If ideas have been manifested through actually just working through them in the most everyday of ways. And I think, honestly, in terms of practice, the relationship between places like the DRL, other places in the school, other universities, is fundamental for practice. Though people sort of pretend that research happens, it's a different form of research. It's practice-based. The things that we're doing here are much more speculative. It's about potentials. It's about asking what things could be instead of what they should be. It's allowing ourselves the opportunity to actually work together in ways that are not actually with the same demands that the everyday is. At the same time, we don't do that for the sake of doing this and then to walk into an office and just be a, just another CAD technician. We do this with the capacity of actually influencing offices, bringing in new ideas, developing new skill sets. I'm very much a believer of empowering people. I think that is as much a conceptual project as it is a technical project and I think honestly the way that we try to pursue that stuff, the way that I try to create a 
educational framework for you is very much predicated on that belief that you have to be willing to actually really develop a fundamental understanding of many things. And that is your greatest asset in your capacity to communicate with also other people that will help you realize that. Why do you think that research is not happening in practice? Like when I was working, for example. And don't get me wrong, I, I really appreciate like my time in practice and I've learned a lot of useful stuff. But it's like, it's getting... People are trying to get to the simplest solution with the less effort and they're trying to make the most profit of it. I, I do realize like this is how practice businesses work, but also businesses are about people and ideas. And where do you think this gap between academia and practice is formed and why? I think uh, offices have a lot of pressures, economic, client-based, working on cultural projects, public projects. Architecture is social, it's political. Every aspect of it obviously is always threatening its, its capacity, its agency to do things. At the same time, I also think that one of the reasons that I find architecture really a powerful feature is because I think it is its high, the highest of arts. It is the thing that actually really demands things coming together in a certain way and its continuous reappraisal of it I think is very important. I don't believe architecture is a business because to be honest with you we don't build for ourselves we build for others and I think actually there's a big problem in the, in the world at the moment when architecture is so devalued, when architects actually don't actually build most of the buildings in the world. When we've realized that our contribution and our ideas basically aren't resonating, partly it could be our fault for not making them accessible. Partly it could also be about not having the desire actually to push those ideas out there and to take the risk with that. I have an office that deals with a lot of risk, but I also have an office that's not a business, and my accountant tells me that pretty much every quarter. That doesn't stop me from doing what I do, but to be honest with you, I feel that research and the relationship between places like this and that are, are by necessity. In other industries, you have prototyping, you have development of ideas and not everything have to go into production. We don't have that. Even the most generic and stupid of buildings is a design to build. It is really magic that these things happen in the way that they do. And I think it is something where we don't embrace technology. Our building industry is a hundred years old in terms of backwardness of thinking. And that's why I also feel technology is not uh, something optional. We have to really explore technology. It's fundamentally human. That doesn't necessarily mean the latest and greatest, but it does necessarily really speak to actually trying to find innovation in everything. And I think you develop those kind of ideas here, and then they become preoccupations, and then you try to find the right form for that to be sort of deployed in. I haven't found an answer other than sheer sort of desire uh, with many consequences, to be honest with you, to sort of push those things forward. So I think the reality of research is not actually what universities call research. It's not about grant money. It's not about these things. A desire about research or design research is really to start to very actively find solutions for very real problems and be able to communicate those and to share those in a way where those things can also be brought as an attractor for all of the different participants that could make that actually really make an influence in the world. We have an amazing radical time. It's not the 60s. The 60s, they believed in the future. They were optimistic about tomorrow. 
Today we don't have that, but we need it probably now more than ever. So I believe like when you do pursue ideas, they have a capacity to excite people, they also have a capacity to mobilize people, and they have a capacity of actually changing things. And I think that that's really our responsibility, to be agents of change. Um, what do you see the difference of when, in the beginning of when the DRL starts and comparing the earliest DRL students and the today's DRL students? What do you see the difference between them? through this past 20 years? No, okay. uh, beginning of the DRL, to be honest with you, you have to situate it in a certain context when there weren't many people exploring these ideas. Uh, Colombia is the real exception in that. And so, you know, conversations about the digital, conversations about the diagram, actually just exploring new tools and to see where that was actually going to lead set up, I think, a very different dynamic. It was also a time when things were very competitive, purposefully so. I think Brett and Patrick created a place where competition and small groups and small teams would basically buy for development of projects. And I think that that has been quite productive in terms of developing some young practices. But at the same time, to be honest with you, I was always a little bit critical of this. Some strong personalities came out of those periods of time, and I think they've done very well. But for me, I think my value system is slightly different. I'm trying to upgrade everything. I think I really do believe that the only real way to actually have change is through community. I don't think community is some 60s hippie thing. I think community is actually developing a relationship with each other that allows us to use ourselves as resources to encourage each other, to work with each other, you know, as international as the scope is, I find it very important to really start to enable people to enable other people. So one of the reasons that I think I've sacrificed, I think, a lot of stuff from my own personal practice was I always believe that education is really important. And I have a belief that in the people that I also educate, that they will share the same sort of value systems with their students as they do that. And in terms of practice, to be honest with you, you know, today I think it's becoming less and less uh, a demand that some of our more current DRL students are coming from. They seem to be continuing to work in offices for five, six, 10, 15 years. That wasn't actually how I thought about things when I graduated. I stayed in an office as long as I felt like I was learning something and then I purposefully left. That happened at Eisenman's, that happened at Zaha's, that happened in other offices as well. Those are challenges, but I think ones that obviously, if you really believe that maybe the appropriate framework for you to actually put forward some of the interests and ideas that you have is not out there, you have to create that framework for yourself. And that's how I created Minimum Forms with my brother and continue to use that as a place and space to explore things. And, and I hope, to be honest with you, that people also look at that as a sort of model for something else. Most of it, to be honest with you, is, is an example of somebody who's obviously moved into a different terrain, to robotics as a career, into robotics you know, after a 10-month foray that also brought about partners like ABB and things like that. And so I think, you know, that stuff, I think, really inspires me also to feel that our students today have uh, more options if they want them. They can move into different fields. Their knowledge is much more exploratory and grounded, I think, in research. At the same time, honestly, it's at times moving away from architecture in a conventional sense, which back then, to be honest with you, that wasn't really an, an option or an issue. Yeah. Many people set up their own office because actually that's what they wanted to do. And 
I think that's why they've also gained some notoriety and success in that pursuit. I've straddled somewhere in between. Still a deep believer in architecture, still the overarching goal, um, but at the same time not uh, willing to wait for someone to somehow bestow something. Working very deep, as hard as I can, I think, in whatever form it is, to make things spatial, to communicate through installations, to prototype ideas, to speak about things and to share them as much as I can. We'll see. It's 20 years. We'll see what the next five bring. You are part of that project. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.